Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to teach you how to make this banana split in oil pastels. It'll be great fun. Let's get started. All right, I have prepared my paper in advance. I have the eight by 10 paper taped to a larger paper. And I've used my ruler to find the middles. So on the eight side, it's at four inches. And on the 10 side, it's at five inches. And that made a big plus sign. Then I'm not gonna chop it in half this way, but I am gonna go in half this way. So starting at the edge, because remember our paper is under our tape. This one's at two and a half, and this one is at seven and a half. And so we have one, two, three, four squares on top, and one, two, three, four, well, they're rectangles on the bottom. So four and four, eight. This is gonna be really helpful because our picture is a long picture with the bananas going this way. And then we have our scoops of ice cream uh, for one, two, three. So that helps it work out very nicely. All right, so we're gonna draw the dish where the banana will rest first. So we're gonna look from the midline down and Let's go ahead and find a halfway mark. So we're going to halfway mark it there. Uh, we don't need all these other halfway marks, but that just helps us kind of get it in position for where we want to go. And so I'm going to take it all the way to the midline there and all the way to there. Um, so there we have how wide we want this kind of bowl shape to be. Um, and then we're going to have like a shallow disc dish, so I'm going to go there. It'll be open, wide, and shallow so that the bananas can sit on them. And so this will go up, and this will go up, and then we will just come right doo -doo 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 -doo, down to that mark, and right down to that mark. So it kind of looks like a banana itself. Now, I'm just gonna straighten this up a little bit because I was a bit sloppy when I connected those. And so after just thinking about where it connects, then I can always make it smoother like that. Also, we don't need our helping lines inside of there. So goodbye helping lines, right out of there. And then we're gonna get the bottom of this particular uh, standing up vessel for our banana split. So I'm just going to put a line there at the middle and then I'm going to go equidistant here and here. Haha, <laughs> it kind of looks like a face wearing a hat now. <laughs> okay, so then I'm going to go this way and this way and this is going to go around 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 to there and this is going to go around 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 to there yeah all right that's all we need for the bottom and we'll do some shading and stuff like that with our oil pastels but that right there is perfect for what we need down there okay the banana so we've already said the banana is resting in this so we just need it to stick out a little farther on the two sides. So that'll kind of be the bottom area. And then we want it a little lower than our middle. So we'll go that way. And we already know bananas come in different sizes. And they kind of curve up slightly. All right, so there is my half of a banana. Yeah, because we know the other side is on the other side. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to do my scoop of ice cream. So my scoop of ice cream is going to be right about here. So here's my line, and it's going to be scooping down with a little bit there and scooping down to there. And then we have the other banana sticking out on the other side. See, because they split the banana. <laughs> okay. Um, then 
We've got that little bumpy frosty edge from the ice cream scoop on that scoop of ice cream. And now we're gonna find our, we'll have this be the, that'll be the vanilla, this will be the chocolate. Okay, so now I'm gonna go this way and this way. Oh, a nice generous scoop of chocolate. And then we'll have a little bit of frosty bit there. And then we'll have our strawberry scoop behind that. So you can see I'm kind of using little sketchy lines to put it in place and get that like bumpy frosty bit where it goes on the outside of the cone. And that straightened up that little circle. So that seems pretty good. I'll erase that. Do, 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 do. Um, so that fits out pretty nicely there. All right, next, uh, the whipped cream is squishy. The cherries are not. So we will put in the cherries first. Cherry and then kind of put the ice cream around it. I mean, the whipped cream around it. Okay, so I'm using my, oh, this one isn't gonna work on the side because it's gotta be lower and it's not at the midpoint on that line. So there we have our three cherries. This one will have our stem going that way. This one will too have a stem. We'll make it a little bit more bendy. And this one will have one going that way. That's fun. Okay. All right. We have our cherries. So now we get to do the fluffy, 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 fluffy. Okay. And over here, fluffy, 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 fluffy. All right. So we got that that all in. Now we're gonna have way more details. But this is a great start. So this is a good sketch for what we're going on. And actually, I'm going to put some of the fluffy bits in front of our cherry like that. And then we'll go front that way. Yeah. And yeah, let's do in, in front that way. Okay. So now we've got our sketch. And I'm going to do a lot of erasing and erase out every line we do not need. And then you will see what we will have left. So first helping lines go away. You got some extra vision that has to go away. And tune in in a second when you see it all gone. Okay, you can see I have erased quite a lot. So those are our lines, the ones we have left. And now that we've cleaned that all up, erased that all up, I have some syrups to put on these delightful scoops of ice cream. So now, notice that I erased the top part there. That's because the whipped cream will come across the top and then the syrup will have kind of this slow syrupy pour. Yes. All right, that's gonna be chocolate on our vanilla. Then we're going to make this whipped cream go that way and some kind of maybe white chocolate. Let's do white chocolate. That sounds fun. Pouring down the side of our chocolate ice cream. Yes, yes, yes. And um, I guess we will just put strawberry syrup on our strawberry one. Well, we can do kind of chunky. I don't know. Okay. Strawberry. It'll be pretty because the ice cream will be pink and then the sauce will be red. That'll be good. Okay. All right. So now we have everything drawn with pencil that we're gonna draw. Notice we did a lot more drawing this time than we did with the bouquet last time. And so we've got that, but I don't want my pencil to be this dark. I want you to be able to see it, of course, um, but I don't want my pencil to be this dark. So we're gonna use the side of your eraser. And I know you have half of eraser. Oh, look, one of my children drew a self-portrait. Okay, um, so you're gonna lay it on its side and go like this to make it a fainter line. Ordinarily, only the artist has to see this, but of course, I'm trying to show you mine. Um, so after you erased, it will be pretty faint um, so that we don't have those dark lines with the pencil showing up in our oil pastel. So now <clears throat> we get to get out our 25 color oil pastel set to begin the coloring. Pastels, we want to start with the lighter colors first. So that means the banana is pretty important because 
um, if we don't get that color on the banana, then um, this color silver can get on the banana. Um, and then the vanilla ice cream is similarly colored to the banana. So let's start there. In your 25 color set, you have three yellows, a lemon yellow, a regular yellow, and a yellow ochre. So even though I just said lighter colors first, because we're gonna be mixing colors to make this banana color, let's start with the yellow ochre. So it's the darkest of the yellows. And we're gonna use it to kind of get a bottom edge. So I'm gonna trace where my pencil line used to be. It's just very faintly there. And you notice on this bumpy paper that it too will be bumpy. So I'm tracing that banana and rotating it so it's easier to follow it. And this banana has been peeled, so there will be another line in the banana. And then we have our fragment of banana over here. Come around that. And then the middle of the banana is darker, so I'm going to color kind of a darker triangle for the area where the seeds would be in there. And now it kind of looks like a hot dog bun. Oh well, it'll all be good. Um, and then this will be our vanilla scoop. So I'm gonna put a few little, kind of like the divots where the ice cream scoops leaves little valleys. And there, we got those there. And then I'm gonna put little ones on our banana going this way for the texture, because evidently bananas are a good source of fiber. All right, so we got that. And then I'm gonna use the regular yellow to put some colors with it. So I'll go where those dashes are. And I'll put some dashes with regular yellow up here too. And yep, I'm gonna go put quite a lot of yellow on the sliced open. It's a little darker over there, the open part. Okay, so let's get you a little closer look there. Ta-da! Yellow ochre and yellow. And for ice cream, we'll put a little yellow kind of down here at the bottom of this. Okay. All right, so now we're going to take our white crepa, not the colorless one, but the white one, and I'm going to use my paper towel to twist off any color that's already on there. Good thing I did. I was going to have a blue banana. All right, so just twist it in there till the tip of it is nice and clean. So I find it easier to color in this direction on this banana because it's long and skinny. So I'm going to go inside my banana and fill that in with the white. So I'm pressing with really good pressure uh, so I can pick up that color and blend it around. So see how it's changing? Just gonna keep doing that till I get all the way down the banana. There's the whole banana colored white on top. And now I'm going to use the white to blend on the cut open banana. So on this one, it's a smaller space. I'm going to stay inside here. And because we colored more solidly with the yellow and the yellow ochre, it will, it will look a bit darker. So there it is, a bit darker. Then I'm going to continue now and color the vanilla ice cream. So, so far, everything is kind of the same color on this one. But don't worry, we'll provide more variety soon. Oops, I guess I was pressing hard. Sometimes that happens. While we're doing our light colors, I think I want to get some of the whipped cream in. So this time I'm going to take my regular yellow and do a few little kind of, it looks like smiles or frowns kind of in there. Smile crown to like show that the whipped cream is all squirted out, right? So that's more fun. Squirted, squirted, squirted. And that was just a plain yellow. And I have like five marks there. 
seven marks there and five marks there because there was more whipped cream here than on the other two. But if you have the same amount of whipped cream, go for a little less and so a little more. And I don't really have to clean this off too much just to get a little bit of the yellow ochre stuff off. And then we're gonna color in the whole whipped cream all the way to the edges and mush out these yellow ones. There is the whipped cream. All right, so we've got a French vanilla ice cream. We have our banana. We'll get back to some shading on that part a little later too. Um, and then we have our whipped cream. And I would say you could use a little yes, less yellow than I did because mine kind of looks like lemon cream or something. Uh, but I'm sure it'll work out in the end. All right. Next, let's do our strawberry ice cream. So we know that our strawberry ice cream will be pink. So let's get our pink out and clean it off in our paper towel. And let's think about the crevices in our pink ice cream. So this one we had like the ochre and I think I'm gonna put like a little burnt sienna so that I have some crevices in the ice cream to really look on the shadowy side. And it'll be more on this side than on that one. So that's in place. That is, actually it's called brown. It totally looks like burnt sienna though, it fooled me. It's just called brown. And then I'm gonna take the pink and color on top of that. Here's our strawberry ice cream and you can kind of see the little hints of the brown lines for the crevices in that ice cream. And you'll notice it's very pink. So we're gonna get our white out now to put some highlights on this ice cream. So we used to have a line here between the circular area of the ice cream and the little Klingon part of the ice cream. And so I wanna go next to that line and get it much lighter on this side of the circle bit so that it has, we're trying to make that round shape. So let's see, we have a little, there we go. Mm -hmm. And then we'll do a little light edge on this frosty. That way it kind of has a 3D look. So we got that part. And I'm excited to do the chocolate part. We do not have our perfectly colored chocolate. Um, so what I think I will do is I think I will actually put down some white first. So on this one, I'm going to put some white on there first. Do, 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 do because we don't want it to be super dark chocolate. We want it to just look like chocolate ice cream. So I'll put that on there first. So nice and white, nothing is happening yet. And then very carefully, I'm gonna put some little black crevices. No, because black can be super powerful. So it kind of looks like it's zebra ice cream right now. Then we are going to get the brown one that is called Van Dyke Brown. So it is this guy here that I have broken before. And I'm gonna color over top of all of that. And it's gonna get that kind of frosty brown because of the white. And it looks like the black wasn't that important. We might have to visit that again something for that. Put a little bit of meltiness over there. Eh, that was probably syrup. Oh well. All right, it is on there. Now I will use the white again on top to once again put a highlight on this side of the ice cream like that and a highlight going on the little frosty bits. So there we have it. We have bananas, we have ice cream, we have whipped cream, but we're still not close to being done. So don't be concerned if it doesn't look like much just yet uh, because we will get there. Let's start laying in our cherries. So first of all, the brown color that we used for the little lines, so um, the little lines in the strawberry ice cream. Yeah, the brown color. We're gonna use that for our stems. And 
if you struggle with getting this to like line up with where you've drawn things, it is possible for you to erase your stems all the way and then just draw them on with this. Um, but if you don't want to do that, I would watch from the side to see where it hits the paper so that you can make sure that your stem is right in between the two lines that we drew. So I'm just watching where it touches. All right, got those in place. And notice that there are like little holes of white. Don't go back because it'll just get wider and wider. Just leave that be for now. Um, and then we're gonna take your vermilion, which is actually an orange red. We're gonna start with our vermilion to color inside of our cherries to begin with. So they kind of look like ch sour cherries at this point, but we will get their, sh their shadows and highlights on them to make them look a little bit more like the maraschino variety, which are artificially colored, I guess, probably. There's the vermilion on the cherries. Uh, notice that they're a bit hairy and fuzzy. Don't worry about that just yet. It's not time yet to be concerned. Um, if I miss getting all the way to the pencil line, I am gonna work hard to get it all the way down in there. Even if I mess up and get a little bit on the whipped cream, I would rather be on the whipped cream than to leave a gap there that's not a cherry. While we have this color, Let's put it on our strawberry syrup over here, too. So that goes on our pink ice cream. And I'm sure it has red number five in there, but it's delicious. I'm going to get that over there. All right, still not finished, but we're getting closer and closer. Okay, so this one has like um, vanilla glaze, like a white chocolate glaze. So it's mostly white. Um, let's see, but I want a little color to it. So I'm going to take uh, part of the light purple color. I'm gonna clean this off. And just under the whipped cream. I'm going to put a purple line so that we know where the shadow from the whipped cream is and how it starts in there. And then I can take my white and kind of drag that purple down. I'm using little circles like a street sweeper, which pulls, you know, parade candy from the edges of the road into its little vacuum to clean off the roads. So the circles will bring the purple down into this white chocolate glaze. And a little bit of the chocolate will get in the chocolate glaze. And it'll just look better than having plain white with nothing else going on up there. So let me get that schmutz off of there and show you what I mean. See, that looks cool. Better than just plain flat white. Next, we're going to take the red one. So we use vermilion, which is orange and red, and now we're going to use regular red to get kind of a dark side closest to us on these cherries. So coloring it right in the middle, right in the middle, right in the middle, closest to us. And then kind of right in the middle on this syrup stuff too. All right. So let's see darker in the middle. There's not a lot of difference, but there's a subtle difference, and that subtle difference is important. I think I kind of squished a little thickness on there. All right, so we got that. Then we're going to get the white one back again, and we're going to add some highlights. You need these to stand out pretty boldly to show that 
shiny skin on this cherries and that the light is bright in the ice cream shop. They're glossy with shine. All right, there you see it. Nice, huh? All right, then the syrup itself needs some gloss. We're gonna put it mostly copying the shape on the left. There you go. Nice highlights, very good. All right, we have used all the calm colors and now it is time for the scary colors. Let's get the black and the gray. All right, so first off, <clears throat> we're gonna put the black in places. So we're gonna trace on this side because this dark chocolate sauce almost looks like black. I'm not going all the way to the pencil line. This is kind of happening in the flat middles and under the whipped cream. Kind of like that. And then we're gonna put it on the silver tray. I think I can watch it go down on this side better. So we're gonna trace the pencil line just under the banana. All the way across, whoops, I missed a spot. All right, and see that little schnoodler right there? If I rub it, it might get black on the banana. So I wanna knock it off like that, okay? Then we have a bit of black here. We have black there. We have black following this line down and this line down. And we have black coming around and around in front and up from in front. <laughs> Actually, this goes a bit farther like that. And this goes a bit farther like that. All right, so we have that and that. Mm. Okay, then let's get the same brown that we use for our chocolate. And we're going to put in a bit of brown here, a bit of brown here, and here, and here. All right, so we had here, here, and here with the brown. And we put some brown there. Okay. Great. Next, gray. All right, so we're going to bring our gray over and we're going to fill in the rest of the white spaces over here with the gray. And we're also going to go on top of the black part. So basically, we're coloring the whole thing with gray over here. Don't worry, it'll work out in the end. You can see I go right on the brown right on the black. It makes kind of a mottled appearance. So it looks like that for now. Don't worry, we'll be back to that. Same thing on the bowl itself. So, oh look, I laid my hand and got black on my banana. I'll show you how to fix that in a minute. We don't need to worry about that right now. So first I'm gonna color the rest of my little bowl, all gray on the black. Yep. That black, it just can't be trusted because it's so powerful. Yeah, well, I guess it's me that can't be trusted. Um, so we'll figure out how to handle that in just a minute. It's good that that happened though, because it, if it can happen to me, it can happen to you and you'll want to know what to do about it. So black and white do tend to be the most powerful colors or not colors. Kind of looks like a hat down there. All 
All right, so there it is, colored with gray on top, gray on top, and we will get our black back. So now we're gonna put black on top again to make this look all dark and syrupy, going this way, going in little circles to kind of keep that. And I'm gonna redraw this back and redraw this back. and even redraw this edge back. So it's very slippery when you have the gray on there and this color on top. Next, our white one, which mine is looking kind of pink. So I'll clean mine off because I need to add white mark there, round that curve under the whipped cream, over there, and then, Need a white lip just under the black line, going across the gray there, like that. And I need a white line going down on the two sides of that so it looks like a shiny metal. Then I'm going to put a little bit. Oops, I got on the wrong side. It's supposed to be above the black line, not below. So I'll just color over that with gray. Goodbye, white. All right, and then I will put it above the black line. And I will put the black line back, back, back. Okay. When I think of ice cream shops, I think of black and white and red. That's kind of like the classic car hop. But I also think of like pink ice cream chairs and sometimes some turquoise. So I'm going to go with like pink and turquoise for our colors for behind on this one. Um, so we're going to get our pink and I'm going to put it like more on this side and kind of create the pink, maybe about to there. That seems good. And then we'll just kind of come down with it here. So that'll be kind of there. Then I'm going to get, which it is called pink. Yes, okay. Then I'm going to get our light pale blue, pale blue color. Yes. And kind of go the rest of the way around. Background color, and I'm going to use it to kind of come around this whipped cream color. And around our banana. Notice I haven't cleaned that off yet. I only really have like one chance to clean off something because the thickness that we colored on it is its protection. And um, we will use that. And actually some of the good color will come off when we get off the bad color. Uh, so it's always a good idea to kind of wait till the last moment to clean off something so that it can keep its protection longer because who knows, I might do it again. So that's my rationale for waiting. because You just never know what might happen over there. And I'm going to put more blue on this side. And well, that was fun. Okay. I think I want to put a little pale green over here. You can practice on another piece of paper, mixing colors to see what colors you might enjoy in a background like this. I did purple and the white, so I'm gonna put a little purple up here too. Get my purple in the middle. Okay, and let's do 
go a little purple. See, there was some black down there. I didn't even see where that came from, but that's okay. It can be there. Got that down there. And maybe, hmm, I'll put a little yellow over here and we'll get some orange. Oh, that's the lemon yellow. Now I feel behooved to put it someplace else. But my bananas are dirty, so I can't put it on there yet. All right, we'll just go with this for now. Okay, so I got colors everywhere. Well, except for there, but that's okay. Um, and now let's get, oh, I can't stop. I have to put more. Okay, I'm going to put darker blue over here now. So I'm going to go a little bit this way. Fun, 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 fun. Okay, and I'm gonna put a little darker green. Down there. Just like, took there like a triangle, okay? And now I wanna put some pink up at the top where I did the purple. Okay, starting to look pretty pretty over the top actually, but I think it's gonna work out. I have pretty good confidence in this. Um, and now let's put some more of the bright orange, do, 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 yellow orange. Yeah, that's good. If I do yellow and, and I mean orange and purple, that'll make kind of a brown color. So maybe I won't go there, um, but I will put some more light green kind of under here. Yeah, that looks good. And I'll put some of that blue color that we put up at the top down here. Oh yeah, that looks good. Okay, and then I outlined with light blue, so I'm gonna put more light blue in there. And in there. Those look good together. And maybe a little light blue there. Okay, so I had lots of fun putting lots of colors on there. Um, the only thing I was cautious about is if it was a complementary color, I didn't put it close together because it would turn brown. So analogous colors or colors that are similar, I put close together. Um, so if you had a color wheel, these would be neighbors on the color wheel instead of opposites. And um, that looks like a lot of fun. And so next we're going to get our colorless blender. This is the one that was not in your set and it is to colorlessly blend things. It has no color to it. It's just the wax. And we're going to go piece by piece in a section and blend these colors together to make them waxy and blended. And it will fill in those white spots. And when it has a complementary color, it will kind of get across that's okay um, and my goal is not to blend onto this gray ice cream thing but it's probably going to happen so just prepare yourself that when it happens um, we'll work it out later so there we have it so you can see how it's starting to be blended and we're going to do that in the whole background now if you're very very concerned and you've got like a lot of gray on there you can clean it off before you go to the next section uh, you know, I am not that fastidious, so I don't mind when I get neighboring colors into each other. I don't even mind if it makes brown, um, but it, you know yourself. It, if it will really bother you, you can be a bit more fastidious and clean it off before you go places on here with it. So I'm trying not to go on those stems, but alas, I know it's probably going to happen too. I'm trying to go next to them. I brought some purple up from the bottom. Did not see that coming, but that worked out well. So we see how we're going so far. Blendy, blendy. And we're just going to continue all the way around the banana split with the colorless blender.
All right, I have been all the way around. See how the nice blending happened? So the colors got blended together, but they didn't get as white or light as they did when we used white on the colors. So it looks pretty good. The one thing I regret is I needed a little bit more color next to this cherry up here and next to this stem there, because when I colorlessly blended things, there wasn't anything for it to colorlessly blend. So I think I'm gonna go back and put a little bit of light blue there and here and then a little bit more of the purple because I think that's what was playing well together up there and I have gone right next to those stems plus that really looks good to have that and then I'm going to blend it again so it's not just colored and done I put it there and then I get to blend it around and so it probably would be better if you watch this video through to put the color there first because you will have a better a better presence of that color than I will because I've got the wax on first. All right, that looks pretty good. Yeah, okay. And the other thing you can do is you can use your finger to blend too. So if you're like, I have really bad control, you can use your finger when there's enough wax on there. You have to use this first because if there's not enough wax, there's nothing to move around. But once you've moved it around with the wax, you can get your finger involved. And some people enjoy that a lot. I prefer to use the cray pot to do it. Uh, but sometimes you just have that feeling that you have more control with your finger in there. So that's what it looks like if you do that. It can be a bit softer. And I'm going to copy my stems now so that they have that. And then I will clean off my finger. <laughs> All right. More light blue here. A little repair work. And more light blue there. Sometimes coloring next to it helps. I want that contrast of the light reflecting on there. Yeah, so blending it with my finger worked better in those places that I wish I had more color. Because it was like the invisible one almost took the top layer off and my finger can more gently coax it to stay there on top. There we have it. And now that I'm at it, I'm going to put more light blue over here, too. Okay, looks good. Now I can help you take care of any smudges. So you see I had the smudge on my banana. I have this smudge here. So what you're going to do is you're going to get a clean, dry paper towel, water doesn't help, and kind of make it come to a point under your finger. Then you're going to lay it down and follow it like a paintbrush to get it on here. And then it kind of moves it away from where it was on there. And you can't reuse a spot, so you have to go again to fold your napkin. For a new spot. Okay, so you go again. Don't use the same corner of your paper towel twice. Okay, and now for our banana. Also, if you have lines, you want to stay inside your line. So I'm going to go this way. Because I'm right-handed and it's easier for me to remove it off the banana like that. And don't try for perfection because you'll go back in and get more black on there. So good enough is good enough. Okay, and I think I had a little bit of bits there on my ice cream. All right, so that is good enough. And now for some shade, some shading. All right, so first off, I don't want to forget to put a little bit of lemon yellow in places. 
uh, because I use the lemon yellow in other places. And so I want it to show up a little bit in, in this picture. So I'm gonna go a little bit down there, and there, and there, and there, and re-put some lemon down here. It was bright and happy. Okay. Next, let's get our dark purple so we can do some shadows. All right, so we're going to put a little shadow under our cherries, under our sauces. This is kind of like what we used the Prussian blue for in the last picture. Uh, but the purple was a li little bit gentler. Uh, when I go under this black and gray, I'm going to have to clean that off so that doesn't show up somewhere I don't want it. Then I can do the ice cream, the ice cream. And then kind of like the two bananas and the underside of our banana, which is just above the gray line. Here it is. And I think I need some purple even on the edge of the silver tray there. And on the foot of the tray there. And I think I just, I need to see more. I like lines a lot. I just like lines a lot. And then I'm gonna come in the sides. My whipped cream. Okay, careful now, don't lay my hand down because I cleaned off my banana too soon. Okay, whew, that's close. I almost laid my hand down. Put in that middle triangle again. I probably would put some yellow ochre there where I put that purple so that they can be together as the dark middle. Yeah, that looks good together. Mm -hmm. All right, now I'm excited about that because now I'm gonna do that again. So I have the yellow ochre and the purple for the top edge of this banana. Yeah, that looks good. And I'm gonna put in some French vanilla little crevices there. Get some more chocolatey brown crevices. Let's try some red. Oh, that was a vermilion, wasn't it? Mm, okay. Well, let's see what it looks like with red. Maybe vermilion was the best way to go. Mm, all right. I think it looks pretty good. I'll put a little bit of black cracks. There we go. All right. Hmm. Do I want anything else? Well, we could put some like chocolate jimmies. Little jimmy sprinkles. We could put some little pink sprinkles on the other one. And put some blue sprinkles on the middle one. Mm -hmm. That looks fun. Mm -hmm. All right. It's impressionistic because so we can't get a really strong line because it's oil pastel. But I'm going to use the red. Oh, I know. I could lay down a piece of paper. To keep my hand from smushing it while I trace my cherries. 
I use the dark red for the sides. I'm actually making them get a little bit bigger. So I'm drawing the sides on the background. So by having the blue behind the red, it makes for a darker outline, which is really cool because then we get a darker outline. And I'm going to re-put in some more highlights underneath. So highlight, 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 highlight. All right. And I'm going to re-put in some highlights. More syrup on the side of my ice cream. So that's where we are. It's looking pretty fun. I do think I want a little bit more white on the front lip under this black line on this side to make it look shinier. So I'm going to get a horizontal line of white there. And I put some purple on this one to make it brighter next to the purple. I'm going to put a little curve around from the back there, round from the back there. Back there, a little under. Okay, now we've got the light coming. Uh, we could put a little bit of white on this, but if you're really happy with it being bright, then you maybe don't want to do that because you can see it changes its tone a lot. Uh, so I'd say probably it's better not to do that. Here, I'll make that go away by using the lemon to move it up the way. Move over, Sizzleine. Okay, that looks pretty great. And you can just kind of keep playing with it to get to your personal style. So if you want more green, more dark green, and again, you can practice on a piece of paper what color background you might like for yours. I experimented with all of them because then you have a good example of what all of them looks like. Uh, but if you're a simple, simple artist, you maybe would just do blue and purple, or just do blue and green, or just do uh, orange and pink table. Yes, you've got some choices here. I like doing all of them. I think it was more fun. We get some more pink. And right now it's a little bit warm in here, and my hands are warm, so all these are kind of melty and and just really moving around here. Um, eventually, over time, this will dry out a bit, and it won't be so squishy anymore, and it will it will season, so to speak, so that it won't stay quite as mushy as it is right now. And that is how we make. A fun banana split. It looks like a party. It looks like a party. I'm going to increase this triangle here. This is one of those dangers where I keep going. I might mess it up, but get that triangle right there. It was worth it. I'll use the orange to get in that space right there. It was worth it. It's okay. Even a little gray got on there, a little black got on there, but I think I like how it looks, so it's all right. So it's even hard for me to stop because it's like, oh, this might look nice if I did that. Right? So that's a normal problem. Put the regular blue under there. Put some little dashes like it's a Surratt in the park. And then we have a nice shadow over there. There. I don't mind that I didn't stop because that looks cool. Right. I'm going to introduce a new color. Prussian blue is going to come in over here. It almost looks like black. That was a predictable order of events. I'm going to put Prussian blue just on this part left. And I kind of like it if the stem showed up a little bit better. So Prussian blue, you're my friend for my stems. Mm 
Yep. Okay. Now, instead of poking a fork in it and calling it done, we can stick a spoon in it. All right, it is finished. And it was really fun to do this with you. We don't have to spray it. It'll dry over time. You can put it behind glass. Um, and now we can just take the tape off. So you can do this to get any little schnoodlins off. If you have stubborn sticking schnoodlins with almost no pressure, you can kind of rake them off a little bit like that. If you use any pressure, it's gonna draw on your picture though. So you want very little pressure. And then we can take the tape off low and at a right angle away from your art.